Vincent Price presents Howell Bennett, Elizabeth Proud, and John Quayle in Out of the Mouths by William Ingram. Vincent Price. Hello and welcome. Richard Atkins was a research buffin. If you were to ask him what kind, he might tell you, I specialize in electrospectroanalysis of human enzyme and molecular structures. And when you'd look suitably blank, he'd smile and add, what makes us tick? To understand Richard Atkins, the trick was not to let his modest manner fool you. At 40, he was probably the best in his field, one of a very select research team. The world seemed his oyster. But then, the same world lost sight of him. Many years later, those caring enough to remember settled for came a bit of a cropper, all a bit hush-hush under the carpet. Few knew the cropper was entirely of his own making. David, what the hell are you still doing here? Well, I just thought I'd hang on a bit, see how it went. My confrontation with the head, much as expected, all very low-keyed, civilized. So... A shoulder to cry on, if you wanted one. Touching, but don't you think I'm a bit old for all that? I'm thinking more along the lines of a drink. Improvement. This shouldn't take me long. Richard, what the hell are you doing? Clearing out my desk. But why? Well, can't it wait till tomorrow? It'll save me the extra trip in. Besides, I don't think I could stand all those raised eyebrows, querying glances. Told you so, from the less charitably inclined. It would only be... With my best interests at heart? If you like. I don't think I could take that either. Right? Right. Truth? Truth. Final tally. One box of paper clips. Three pencils, black, for the use of. Oh, two broken, so not for the use of. Assorted elastic bands come in handy. I can make tanks out of cotton reels and matches. <laughs> that brings back memories. Doesn't it? Just the... Uh, just the caper for whiling away my premature retirement. Richard. Not pulling your weight, old fellow. Reasons best known to yourself, old fellow. But the whole project falling behind, old fellow. Rest of the team down, old fellow. Dee-da, dee-da, dee-da. That was in triplicate, wasn't it? Just about. Was that all he said? Mm, just about. Really rather touching, though. What? Whatever it was, he thought he was doing, poor old sod. So stewed in scientific jargon, anything approaching the human touch is quite beyond him. Ever the scientist. Options open right to the end. Oh? Showed me the door, but still didn't have the guts to slam it hard behind me. Oh? Losing a good man? Well, that's a fact. Big step, couple of weeks leave, time to think it over. That came in triplicate, too. Why, don't you? Right. I think I've earned that drink now. By the way, how's Rachel? She's fine. Just fine. It's been ages. Kate and I were wondering if you oh, both found... Oh, for Christ's sake. I think we can skip the social niceties, don't you? There's no need, David, old mate. For what? For whatever the hell it is you think you're doing. Richard, we're not just colleagues, we're friends. No hard feelings, but I don't think friendship comes into this. Not in the long run. A sounding board, then. Some kind of explanation. You owe it to me. Do I, Charles? Yes. Yes, I do, don't I? Let's face it, friend David... I was roped in on the project because they thought I could contribute something. They obviously still do. I could almost write them my end-of-term report. Liable, diligent, though very occasionally restive, but perfectly manageable. Well? I just reached the point where I got sick of being diligent at the expense of being only occasionally restive. I see. You don't. And I'm not much better equipped to explain it. Just that recently... I've been staring down the wrong end of the microscope. So busy manipulating or trying to, so many pieces of the jigsaw. I've lost sight of the overall pattern of things. That's all. Go on. This great secret we're all after. Evolution. The fountainhead. Call it what you like. Because the word hasn't been coined that could do it justice. But 
we've always considered it a process of growth. Growth. Growth physical, growth intellectual, growth spiritual. And I'm still scientist enough to put spiritual last. Well, I simply don't think of it as growth any longer. Deterioration. That's what we should be setting our sights on. But isn't that part of the same? No, I'm not just talking about the inevitable cellular deterioration, gaga, second childhood. I'm talking about something altogether more subtle. The kind of deterioration induced by the education of a child. What I'm trying to say is at the very outset, in the very early stages, in a child's preformative years. You see, I suspect it's all there. All inherent awareness, absolute knowledge, already there, encapsulated. From birth, it obsesses me. If we could only catch the child early enough, before the educating process has begun. If we could somehow tap in, contrive to communicate with a newly born on its terms, not ours. God only knows, David, what it is we might tap into. And a little child shall lead them. If you like. Prophetic, but hardly scientific. If you like. Daunting, though, isn't that? Even know where to begin. Let alone where it might end. I told you it was too early for words. Rachel was still up when Richard got home. He could have wished it otherwise. Concerned attention was the last thing he wanted. But behind her ministering was a feeling of something deeper, unspoken. As though she, too, had news she was finding it difficult to put into words. More coffee? Oh, no, thanks. It's coming out of my ears. How are you feeling? Death. I hoped you'd be tucked in before I got back. David rang. Do you warning? Typical. He meant it for the best. Typical. You're being very mute about it all. I thought that's what you wanted. It speaks volumes. It's not that I'm against any decision you decide to make. Wrong tense. But? I just think... That David might be right. He is your friend. Yes. He tried that tack, too. Well, why didn't you give yourself more time? <laughs> talk about it. What the hell is there to talk about? An instinct? You don't talk about instincts, Rachel. I just know that all these years I've been facing the wrong way. That's all. It doesn't follow I know where I'm going from here. And you'd risk everything you've achieved? Your reputation, your position, your home for that? Oh, God forbid I should ever risk my home. You know what I mean. If it's the roof over your head you're worrying about, he went with the job. But a year's get out either side, all right? Richard. They'll stick to their side of the bargain. You can count on it. If only to see if I'll back down, come to heel. So... Not much risk of your having to pitch a tent doss under the arches just yet. All right. You think I'd mind if I had to? No. No, I don't. That's one of the reasons I married you. If I sounded over-anxious, petty... No, no. Concerned, then? What the hell about? Not for my own sake. Surely not for mine. Not for yours, either, particularly. Well, then... We're going to have a child. Rachel? Rachel? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> a little child shall lead them, as the prophet said. That's the second time I've heard that today. Their child was a boy. Their decision to name it David was mutual. And by the time the christening party came around, any feeling of antagonism there might have been between Richard and his one-time colleague seemed as remote as if it had never happened. So glad you could come, David. It's my own godson's christening party. It'd be a rum old do without me. Besides, you named him after me. You're like missing your own launching. And all that stuff about setting him a Christian example... A bit below the belt, wasn't it? Lord only knows how I'm going to live up to it. I did think... What? You might prefer to opt out. Why on earth should I? Past behavior pattern? That's it, Morton. Now, it was only a temporary lapse on your part. Was it? Water under the bridge. Is it? 
which is more than can be said for these champagne bubbles. <laughs> to young Caruso. Fine. You're disturbing Mumsy Wumsy. If you can't sleep, we better settle for a ten minute tour of the estate. <laughs> Rachel's call to David was brief, but behind her request that he come around as soon as possible, he sensed an underlying feeling of panic and urgency. Richard was out. Together they sat in the small kitchen, David listening intently. But Rachel was distant, far off, reliving that night of the storm. The almost hypnotic trance instilled in her husband by the wide, innocent eyes of the child. I must have dropped off to sleep again, David. I've no idea for how long. It might have been minutes, hours. I only know I woke up with a start side of the bed was empty. No sound from the nursery, but a, a feeling of... Yes? Coldness, a, a chill, something I'd never known before. I called his name down the stairs, but he didn't answer. When I eventually found him, he was in the study, standing at the blackboard. It's ordinary enough. There was something about it that was almost awesome. That's a funny word to use. But as though I was in the, the presence of... Of what, Rachel? He was holding young David in the crook of one arm. I couldn't see, but I knew instinctively the baby's eyes were open. Wide open. Staring into Richard's. With a kind of fierce intensity... One doesn't associate with a child. And Richard? Oh, totally unaware of me. He was writing on the blackboard. God knows I've watched him do that at all hours. Have to get it out of my head. The only way I can get back to sleep. But this time, one blackboard was filled already. He was halfway down the other. With what? Equation after equation. But when I looked closer, all the characters were unrecognizable. Lacking his usual neatness. Unmethodical, sprawling, line after line. Written with a terrifying urgency. But in the handwriting of a child, David. The writing of a child. It was the baby who felt me there. A whimper of recognition. Part sigh, but part warning. And the writing stopped. And Richard? He went back to bed. I nestled in his arms. Didn't even refer to it. Didn't you? I never felt the need. Till now. That's why I asked you over. Oh? It hasn't stopped, you see. 
Night after night. Not always with a baby in his arms. Sometimes in the cot at his side. But always... This telepathy between them. I just couldn't keep it to myself any longer. I needed you to see for yourself. Then how about now? Yes. All right, then. Through here. Clear the door. Right. No chance of us coming back. Oh, not before lunch. He's taking young David down to the park. Let's get on with it, then. Well, what do you make of it? What's on the blackboard? What can one say? A child's call, but no kind of formula. Related to his work when he was at the centre? No, not even remotely. Scientific. A mathematical progression of some kind, and yet... Beginning on this board in, in, in complexity, diminishing, simplifying, to end in just two indivisible symbols. Alpha, omega. Beginning, end. The life force. Why did you say that? I don't know. Is there any chance of you making me a copy of this? Oh, yes, I suppose so. As soon as you can, Rachel. As soon as you possibly can. She wondered whether to tell Richard of David's visit. Wondered, too, whether he sensed some deeper significance behind the casual manner with which she finally mentioned it. But if he did, he showed no outward sign of it. We had a visitor. Oh? David. Well, you hear that, young David? Godfather comes a calling, and only Mumsy Wumsy here to receive him. What did he want? Nothing special. Just dropped by to see he's got something. We see. Where did you get to? We told her the park, didn't we? Oh, had great fun, didn't we? God knows when I found myself sitting on the swing last. <laughs> Did. Thinking of writing to the council. Adult Discrimination Act. 20-year-old age limit at the very least. You still wouldn't qualify, darling. What? Oh, sorry, I've forgotten your fork. I'll manage with a spoon. Don't be silly. I'd rather manage <coughs> with the spoon. <coughs> now look what he's done. Naughty, naughty, Daddy. All over his best bib and tucker. You were warned. Bib and tucker, bib and tucker, bib and tucker, bib and tucker. <laughs> what? It would be only too easy to gloss over the weeks that followed. For Rachel, the overpowering imperative desire was to convince herself that everything was normal, that nothing untoward was happening, and that even if it wasn't, the real trouble lay in her own imaginings, that nothing in their lives had really changed, that Richard's affinity, this strange extra affinity he had with his son, unspoken, undeniable, was simply part of the process, part of becoming a father. She clung to the notion like a life raft. I only have to give him time. No, give myself time. If there's anything that needs questioning, it's my attitude. My ridiculous, jealous reaction to it all. As though my own son were some kind of a stranger. An intruder. The very notion of it appalled her. And so she had to find her consolation in the belief that her husband's behavior was simply a phase again. Of one thing she felt sure, no outside help was needed, especially from the likes of David, the meddling do-gooders. In fact, to be avoided at all cost. A period of togetherness, seclusion, away from the world was what they needed. But it was Richard, this knew Richard that resisted it, resisted with all his being. There was about him now an almost animal-like capacity for living she'd never known before, as though a contest between them, mental, but at the same time primevally physical. A morning dawned when she was forced to admit she was losing, that she no longer had any choice and as before, it was to David she turned. Rachel, 
Are you all right? Come in, then. Thanks. I got your message, but when I rang back, I didn't recognize the voice. So I hung up. Yes. Richard said he thought it was probably you. Richard said? It didn't sound like him. Well, he's either got one hell of a cold or his voice is on the change. Come on through. What's all that racket? Oh, just kids. Coffee. No, thanks. Rachel, you've been avoiding me. Yes. That stuff on the blackboard, you've run into a brick wall, haven't you? We've fed it through the computer. And? A blank, beyond computer analysis. Thought as much. Honey, it doesn't even seem important now. He knew I gave it to you. You told him? Just knew. It didn't seem to upset him. Only part of the key was what he said. All in the eyes. He was smiling at the baby at the time. And the baby seemed to know what he was saying and smiled back. And now... Look. What is it, Rachel? Come here to the window. Well, tell me what you see. Richard? Hardly believable, is it? The change in him. Childlike. That's it. Childlike. What the hell's he up to? boy next door kicked his ball into the garden. In the old days, Richard would have tossed it back with a picking off of his trouble. Yes, sir. Look at him now. Well, the father of instincts is coming at him. You know that, isn't it? Competitive. Like equal. Would you believe he went out and bought a train set for young David? A bit premature. Oh, wasn't it, though? He played it out in the attic. Most nights now, I wake to find his bed empty. I see. And that ridiculous tiny train rushing overhead. He always despised comic strips. A pet hobby horse. With tards a child's ability to read. Now it's the first thing he turns to when he grabs the morning paper. Idiotic, isn't it? His eating habits have changed from savory to sweet. Would you believe lemonade and peanut butter sandwiches? His dress is more slovenly. His movements more awkward, more boisterous. As though... Well, look at him, David. Look at him. Yes. You see it, too. Turning back the clock. I think somehow he's achieving it. The eyes. It's all in the eyes. That's what he said. And there the two of them have developed some kind of extraordinary telepathy between them. Young David, Richard, the child, and the man... Enabling him to project himself backwards instead of forwards. Ultimate knowledge to absolute innocence. Backwards, ever backwards. Until... Until what? Dear God, who knows? They had no ready-made label to stick on Richard's sickness, so they coined one, new minted pathological regression. They went through the processes, of course, psychoanalysis, mental therapy, deep hypnosis. But Richard's tragic condition deteriorated. They tried to save face by calling it prescribed inevitable. They could also have added doomed. One bright summer's morning... If you'd been up early enough, you'd have spotted the ambulance arriving outside the house. You'd also have seen a schoolboy, dressed in a neat gray worsted suit, face beaming, hair slicked, as though for an outing. The nursing home attendant opened the ambulance's back door, but young Master Richard elected to sit up in the front. The accompanying doctor saw no reason to object. As they began to pull away, the boy gave a quick backward glance to an upstairs nursery window. Beyond it, the baby, young David, stirred in his crib and gave a smile of pure innocence. It, whatever it is that has been happening to me, 
has stopped. I myself have no doubt of the fact. I do not need their sums and figures of my height and weight, or their little knowing nods and clicks of encouragement, as though it were all their doing. My journey of discovery has come to its end. A good breeze today. Later, they will let me take my sailing boat to the little pond in the grounds. I shall watch it fighting the elements and the rough seas. A week or so ago, they brought a young boy, David, here to see me. He might have been five or six, but I can get nothing from him again. Life's manipulators have had their effect. His wearisome progress forward, thanks to them, has begun. As a result, my return backwards towards... But I shall never know now. It's my birthday tomorrow. They have not yet decided whether I shall be eleven or twelve. It doesn't really matter. I know I have stopped in time. No backwards now. No forwards either. The lessons they will give me will certainly get them nowhere. I am far, far beyond their lessons. Many years later, the young David was to ask his mother... What happened to my father? Rachel had prepared herself for that moment. He went away, a long, long way away. It was not too far from the truth. That was Out of the Mouth, starring Hal Bennett as Richard, Elizabeth Proud, Rachel, and John Quayle, David. The Price of Fear was presented by Vincent Price, written by William Ingram, and directed by John Dyer.